Hello everyone and welcome to this video on how to bring your intranet inside Microsoft Teams with Viva Connection. This is the 11th video part of the how to build the ultimate modern SharePoint online intranet series and I'm joined by Sebastian Levert. How are you doing Seb? I'm good but you were right. I'm actually shaking now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, one coffee per video, 11th video. I hope you got some of that decaf mixed in between a little bit. I forgot. I, I absolutely forgot. For everybody watching at home, know that this is a joke. I'm not with 11 coffee in the last four hours, or I might be really shaking. I'm not shaking, but I'm having fun, and it's, it's great to be here uh, to talk about, I think, one of my favorite newer capabilities that connects the dots between two worlds, right? You're always a big fan of Microsoft Teams. When we're working together, you're all about like, like Teams is the new operating system and everybody will live in Teams. So <laughs> I know this is one you're really excited about. Uh, for those of you that haven't followed the series, I mentioned it before, but this is the 11th video part of a 12 video series. We're almost at the end on how to build your ultimate modern SharePoint online intranet. We have done quite a few things. This is the last step. So if that is your goal, make sure to watch the whole series. But if you only want to learn about Viva Connections and how to do this part, this is the video for you. Before we get started, there's a few things that we have to get ready on the checklist. This is another one, and I felt we kept all of them for the end, Seb, where you can prepare everything, but you still need a SharePoint Online admin and a Teams admin to actually get this one done. So you don't only have to pay a lunch for your SharePoint Online admin, but you got to get a Teams admin on this one as well. So don't go somewhere too expensive, maybe, if you're going to bring <laughs> a lot of people. Or go to Starbucks for a coffee. It might be cheaper. Yeah, or, uh, not, or not, or not. Depends. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Uh, especially when you're like me and you take like a venti caramel macchiato with an extra shot. Uh, it, it gets expensive. It does. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else do you need to know? The comm site where you want to enable uh, or that you want to embed, let's say, in Microsoft Teams. This doesn't have to be a home site, but we highly recommend it is. Uh, so again, it doesn't have to, it needs to be a communication site. You need to have the name of the app. So what is the name of your intranet? Uh, is it Excalibur? Is it the hub? Is it uh, Vlad Talks Tech Hub? You need to know that part. And you need to have a short description and a long description. This is something that I guarantee you that your SharePoint admin will not want to be the one deciding. So work with comms on what the short and long descriptions will be. Now, part two, you need to know the privacy policy link. This is something that your admin will need to provide. Uh, this is something that, to be honest, your organization probably already has a generic privacy uh, policy. So just link to that, as well as the terms of use. You need to uh, have that link. Again, I'm sure your company already has it. You just need to dig up what the link is. Uh, your organization's name, I really hope you'll know that one. That should be pretty easy to figure out, as well as your organization's public website link. If ever you're part of a multinational, multi-brand company, you might need to check with comms on what you want to have in there, but that should be fairly straightforward. And you will also need not one, but two different icons, a colored icon, which needs to be 192 by 192 pixels, and an outline icon, which is 32 by 32. Now, this is something that your marketing department or your graphics department will get to you. Uh, Microsoft actually has really detailed specifications on what they expect. Uh, we'll maybe cover them. If not, I'll put a link in the description on what to send them, part of your requirements. Awesome. But that's it for the slides. Now let's go actually set it up. Uh, again, this is something that your SharePoint Online admin must do. For, 
so far we have actually not done any PowerShell in here. So I think we've done everything via the UI. We've talked about PowerShell, but we haven't done any. But this time we're actually going to go over some PowerShell. So first of all, you need to go to the Add the Viva Connection desktop app to Microsoft Teams. You will have a link in the description below. And then you need to go and download the Viva Connections desktop via PowerShell script. This will download the zip file, which you see here, it has a readme, a PowerShell script, and a license. We are just going to, let's, let me actually open PowerShell as an admin here. By the way, Seb, you see, I'm still technical and not marketing. When I started typing power, it gave me PowerShell and not PowerPoint. That means I'm not marketing, I'm still doing tech. Uh, <laughs> that is the ultimate way to know if somebody is, even in a tech role, if they're doing more slides or more work. Start typing power in the start bar. If PowerPoint comes up, you know they're a slide machine. If not, you know they're still technical. <laughs> so let me go to the this directory. Now I'm sure, Seb, you're gonna go try and it's gonna go PowerPoint for you, but we're not going to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I confirm. <laughs> life, life of a PM, I guess, right? Exactly. That's okay. I can, I can live with that. Okay. So let's run the PowerShell script. We will allow it to run. Uh, what it will do, the script in the back end, I actually have a video which looks at the details of the script. It will make sure that it will uh, go check, have the SharePoint module. I need to give it the link. So for us, it'll be the tech landing here. I will give it a tech landing link. It will validate. It will actually ask me for the username and password. So let me put my Vlad here next. And now my password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, of course, right? Okay. Well, what and, else could it be? Yeah. Or no, it's pass that word one as everything Microsoft. Absolutely. It's funny that my, they don't even allow this password anymore because too many people use it. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Okay, so what will be the name of our app? Let's call it Tech Landing. Uh, that's the name we set for our home site as well. Short description, uh, the best intranet in the world. And great long description, the best intranet in the world uh, built by Vlad and Seb. Perfect. Uh, just, just, uh, okay. I was going to say maybe the Empress 10, but yeah. It, yeah, it, I, I was, as I was typing it, I have to say I was a bit scared of using good. it. It might fail, but let's see. Uh, now for the privacy link, I will go a bit more lazy. If you don't use one, it will actually use the default privacy policy for Microsoft. It's okay for a demo. I wouldn't use it in prod. Uh, same thing for the terms of use. I will use the Microsoft one. I wouldn't use that in prod. My organization name, Vlad Talks Tech. Uh, public link is, uh, let's see, HTTPS, VladTalksTech.com. Great. Now I need to upload the pictures. It actually opened on my other screen, but I will upload them here. First one is the colored one that I have here. And second one will be the outline one, which you see it's 32, 32 white logo. This way it shows up nicely in Teams. Let's click on open and exit. What happened now is that on my desktop, which probably I will not see it here. I will show it to you after. It created a zip file with my app. Now I need to go into admin.teams.microsoft.com. You might not have their good rights here. That's okay. Just uh, if you've done this, take the zip file, send it to your Teams admin. They will go under Teams apps, manage apps, and they will upload a new app here. Let me go to my desktop here and I will select the tech landing zip that I just got. Uh, while this is getting done, Seb, uh, you're the dev here. So that zip file is a Teams app, and the info we gave 
how to do its manifest, right? Exactly. So we created a manifest. There's a couple of descriptions, uh, URLs to some areas of your uh, intranet, the colors, and all these kind of things. Super simple. Uh, nothing fancy or whatsoever. Just what you need to be able to do that. It, it's a very, very simple zip file. Nothing super tricky. And all the, the Teams apps are actually sharing the same kind of file uh, of, of manifest. Even third-party one that you might purchase or the one that you might build yourself. Awesome. Okay, so the new app got added. I will not go into details too much, but your admins could go and actually force show it there for everybody, put it at the top. Uh, I will not show it because uh, if you're a Teams admin, there's way more in-depth trainings on how all of this actually works. Yes. And it also takes about 24 hours for this to take effect. So we will not cover this, but know that it's possible for your Teams admin to make the intranet app show at the top of Microsoft Teams for users. Now I'm in Teams. What I will do is I will go under apps here at the bottom and I should actually see built for your organization. I have the tech landing app here, you see by Vlad Talks Tech, the best intranet in the world, built by Vlad and Seb, and it took the end percent. That's great. I had doubts. We didn't practice this before, by the way, but it did work. So let me add this to my teams here. You see the H here. That's why it's important that your marketing team gets it right. You want to make sure it looks beautiful. Uh, can I actually move it or doesn't allow me to? Maybe if I pin it here, I can... No, it doesn't allow me to. Your admin can decide if people can move it or not and many other things. But you see, I'm now, I have now have my intranet inside Microsoft Teams. Isn't this awesome? I'm in Teams and I have full access to my intranet. And, and there's even some special things that are happening right now, right? There's the first one that I noticed, it's top right. There's some links in here that are not there usually on 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 the on the browser like copy link is not something that is yeah. there when you go there so what what happens there so this allows me let's say i'm on a sharepoint page or inside teams but i cannot copy the url here right teams.microsoft.com but i want to send the page to somebody i can just copy it then i can send it to somebody it'll really give me the sharepoint link to that, or and maybe there's something that, okay, I'm in Teams, I maybe need to fill a form or I need to go to a chat, but I want to do this later. I can just click on go to website and it will open it in a new tab for me directly to the intranet. There's something else that is kind of cool and a lot of people miss it, and including me at first. If you re click, on the app. So after you're in the app, if you re-click on the logo, it will open the SharePoint app bar so I can see my global navigation that we learned about in the previous video. I can, of course, use it to navigate. I also see my sites, my news, and I can go out and click on see more to see my files. So even if you're in Teams, you do not lose access to that SharePoint app bar. In my opinion, it's a bit tough for first-time users to know that because usually I go in Teams, like say I go in Tech Landing, I wouldn't think of re-clicking yeah. on the logo again. So maybe that's something that you might need to be a bit, you might need to do a bit of user adoption, training, tips and tricks on, but your global navigation is still there. And when you click on different links, it will all open inside Teams. So I can really navigate throughout my hub. I can use the global nav, the hub site nav, the hub nav and the site nav. Well, too many navs there. <laughs> and without ever leaving Teams. And that's that's amazing for me. Vlad, can I ask you to do something here? Because I think there's a really cool feature. Um, if you go and search right now, because we we basically lost some of it, right? So if you go back to uh, the home, here? Um, if you, yeah, and if you search for something here, let's search for news or... I'll or search website. for future because I know yeah. we have a news in the future. Okay. Um, so there's two um, 
um, options here that are appearing. And I think the second one is what we're looking for here. It knows that we are in a SharePoint site right now. So it allows you to search inside the tech lending. Uh, so that's, I think that's a great feature, right? Oh yeah, and this will actually open it in the SharePoint site as well and go directly to the, I mean, the SharePoint search that we know and love. In my opinion, I still love SharePoint search more than team search for many different reasons. Uh, but yes, it, and, and that's something that, again, for me, it needs a bit of user adoption because usually I don't even look. I type, I press enter, but the first option is the Teams option. And see here, it didn't actually find anything. And that's normal. But yeah, it might need, Alex, did I did I click too fast for it? Might need a little bit of a refresh. You broke it, Lance. I broke it. There we go. No, yeah, if, if you start typing, it'll give you the two options. But yeah, maybe a little bit of user adoption to tell people like, hey, if you want to search for stuff inside the intranet, make sure you click on the next one. On and, the and, that's one. A, and that's definitely a, a, a top of mind for uh, the search team, right, to kind of combine these results in a single pane of glass. So that is something that I would not be surprised if um, there was a, a more convenient search experience, um, either um, as part of a, a like merged um, search box, but at least having having the results as part of Microsoft Teams will be um, absolutely awesome. And that's absolutely a top of mind for the team. Awesome. And something else that's maybe worth mentioning, since this will open up the SharePoint site, if you have multilingual configured, it will be aware of that as well. So that's super cool. And if you want to, you can actually have multiple Viva Connections app inside your tenant plugged on multiple communication sites. Now we're really going in depth into a way more complicated information architecture with a different setup policy and permission policies in Teams. So that's maybe a topic for another day. But just know that technically you could have multiple Viva Connection apps deployed and targeted to the right people. But yeah, that's a way more advanced topic. And and it's it's great. I, I, I find that this is a great way to uh, even not just for having multiple portals or internet, but just as a way to roll it out. Initially, you will want to have maybe a specific set of users that try it out, that that gives you the feedback you need. So you can target these users. These, these users will be the only ones to see the Teams app on their left rail, and then you can expand it to more people and more people. And yes, in the end, potentially have only one Teams app for everybody. But while you're building it, you can have uh, one Teams app with different set of policies to bring more and more and more people to this. Awesome. Well, I think this is the overview of how to bring your intranet inside Microsoft Teams. This is, in my opinion, something that in today, every company should do it. I, I wouldn't think of a valid reason to not give your users the option to consume the intranet inside Microsoft Teams. It will only make your intranet more popular and will get your users more engaged. So I think you should definitely do it. Absolutely. Uh, and, and just to give you an, an example here, like, like from the field, that's exactly how I access my internet on a daily basis. And I go to the internet a lot more now that it has its own spot in Microsoft Teams rather than uh, having to go open up a browser, figure out the URL and, and get access to it. It's absolutely awesome. Awesome. Well, this is it for this almost last video in the series on how to bring your intranet inside Microsoft Teams with Viva Connection. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to get notified for more awesome videos like this, uh, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. In the next video, which will be our final one in the series, we're gonna take a look at some additional tips and tricks on how to keep your intranet up to date and awesome because an intranet is never done. Until then, Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.